Hi, welcome. We're going to go over one thing that's really fun is feedback loops, intentional feedback loops within Ableton. Now, the first thing I like to get set up with this is set up a return track um, and, of course, safety first. So we're going to put a limiter, a, a hard, hard limiter on the... Uh, final on, on the master track so the master fader is just gonna get a, a brute um, we're gonna have it like around I don't know four negative four that's pretty loud so that's just completely on no no doubt about it you never you never want to do feedback loops without a limiter. Now, you can put a limiter on the track that we're going to mainly do the feedback on because you really don't, You, I mean, well, yeah, you don't want to do feedback straight through the, through any of these. I like to do it through a return track. So, now, you might be asking, how does that work? Well, I'll show you. So you just have your limiter here, just in case something goes wrong, and you enable the send of the return track on itself. So you see, we only have one return track here, and this meter right here is tells us to send whatever it may be to this um, to this send track. You know, I'll, I'll just illustrate it right here. We'll get a a sound here, a sample. Sorry, one shot. Let's do a clap. How about that? Clap. It's pretty loud. And we're not going to send it to master. Just sends only. Um, that's pretty pretty good practice within this workflow. and just send the clap track to your return there you go that's what it was usually that was what it was intended for now you might be wondering why would you want to do feedback loops well it's a pretty um basic approach to noise music a lot of noise musicians use it um it's been used in experimental electronic music for a very long time. People like Eliane Radig, Pauline Oliveros, and so many others have really made this sound, uh, illustrated this sound as a versatile sound, and there's plenty of modern examples. But here's a quick way of getting your own hands on it without using an actual physical mixer. And um, you can, you have a pretty broad capability so just gently we're just gonna gently turn things up here and you know hey for the heck of it why don't we just turn down the master fader real quick before we get any signal going and we're just gonna excite that with the clap here um, yeah okay the clap isn't going to the send so just gonna excite the see there we go we already have it there's the feedback loop you could even move around the ceiling the limiter is kind of affecting how this actually sounds um, so keep that in mind, like, for instance, of course we have the master uh, also limiting it, um, so I'm just going to temporarily disable this limiter. So you can kind of see what's going on here. 
And, you know, this sound by itself isn't that nice. You know, it's kind of nice that it has like a weird format going on here. Um, we're going to enable the send to a second return track so we can uh, and disable this so we can get some peace and quiet. No, so we can actually shape how that. Um, oh, well, sorry. So to do this properly, you'll have to do uh, sends post. So this this return track needs to be uh, or sorry. Yeah, a needs to be pre. Yeah, so there we go. So turning it down won't affect or Yeah, right. Alright, so they both need to be pre. So it's just So they both need to be pre-fader, which means they're both before the fader that sends it to the master. And you still get that feedback loop going. The feedback loop isn't going on here, it's going on here. We can still affect it here. But let's say we want to affect it. Uh, you could affect the master, but it's just better to break it out into tracks here. Um, so let's say we wanted to do a filter, which is a pretty good, sounds good right about now. So yeah, so there we go, it's much more mellow, much more focused, we just have, that's what's going on here. Now say you wanted to record this, um, well first you would have to get rid of the loops, and uh, enable the send to go to whatever audio track, and then enable record on it. And then you can just record it. Pretty simple, straightforward, you know. Um, but we're not going to record it right now. We're just going to enjoy sound, you know, shaping out this sound here. So we're going to put this back to master and get rid of this. Now, again, you the important thing and the really fun thing about no input feedback loops and, and stuff or, or well in this case it's not no input and the the fun thing about feedback loops is that signal chain is absolutely necessary to how the sound goes so even before we hit this filter with the signal you can put another filter and that would affect the feedback completely and putting resonance and everything uh, of course affects that you see like kind of the when you put that filter on with the resonance it just immediately latches on to the resonance as opposed to going anywhere else and this is due to the fact that we have a limiter going on so if we didn't have the limiter it would just hit that frequency very hard and it would kill you just I mean really it would just kill you so we can try some other things here let's talk about this or let's hear this spectral blur which is kind of like a really crazy we can get rid of the wet you know how wet that signal is not getting a ton of feedback with this so we gotta turn up oh um, we gotta increase the gain here why not use a pedal for that try a fuzz Don't. I'm going to open up this filter and hear what's going on. So 
So you hear there's a ton of capability for sound design. You know, if you're looking for, like, interesting ways to come upon, like, sound effects and stuff, this was, this is great. I mean, this, you know, I mean, the effect isn't that high quality, but it kind of feels like, you know, something out of, like, a, I don't know, Prometheus or some sci-fi movie. Now, now, what I was saying about signal chain, what if we add this filter back in and move around the stuff? What if we move the f limiter at the end? something oh that's not pleasant at all no it's not no it really isn't it's not a pleasant sound and of course a really popular really popular audio effect would probably be the ring ring modulator we're gonna get rid of these frequencies here my lord that is something isn't it uh you 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 have to <laughs> definitely take into account when you're doing things make sure you have that limiter because if that limiter wasn't there everything would hurt so much i mean you could even put a multi-band Let's get a frequency shifter in here. Noise people love frequency shifters and specifically ring modulators. So we, we hear we don't have a ton of feedback going on. Oh, uh, there it is. It's coming back. The... The reverb tends to really, like, 
mellow things out, which is great and not so great because we do want to hear things. We won't want things to just completely go away. So I have this pitch hack, which is like a pitch delay kind of. Let's get, let's get this back. And of course, you can put effects on the feedback loop signal. So as you see here, this is kind of the problem with using a limiter is uh, things can get so loud within the actual um, the feedback within itself that it just kind of just does one thing and not a ton else. Like right here, this ring modulator just kinda entirely made us go into this oscillator territory.
try a... Oh, wow. That just kills it, huh? So you can hear there's a lot of like lower stuff going on. It's kind of affecting the feedback and, and what this limiter is telling. So if you have like, see this, just try to excite more.
So yeah, I mean that really <laughs> you just can get a ton out of that. Um, I definitely think uh, everyone should try it. Who's interested in kind of experimental approaches to both music and sound design? I think it's uh, it, it'll give you some good good samples, uh, good material. Uh, thank you very much. Let me know if you have any comments below, and enjoy. <laughs>